Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Raptors Nation podcast. I'm your host, Sean Davis, joined as always by my co-host, Luca Rosano. Luca, we have a ton of breakdown from last night's contest. First off, how are you doing? I'm feeling good. Raptors 1-0. and They beat a really good Cavs team in their season home opener. It was a wild opener. It felt like a playoff game. The electricity was at an all-time high, and the Raptors were able to get a hard-fought win. So a great way to start the season for them. We've talked at length about their start of the season being a tough one with their first seven games and uh, being able to get one in the bag, it, it definitely feels good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before we dive into all that and the game from last night and previewing tonight's, oh, from Wednesday night, and previewing tonight's game against the Brooklyn Nets, please do subscribe right here to the Raptors Nation YouTube channel. Ring that post notification bell as well. It's going to be a ton of fun breaking down all these Raptors games so you're all on the updates and our Raptors news throughout the entire season. We're going to stand up with our latest content. And go over and check out the Raptors Nation podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. Give us a five-star rating and review is the easiest way to help off the show. Now, let's dive into what was a fun game last night. The Raptors wind up winning 108 to 105. I think I did. I think I took the, the Raptors money line last night. So there we go. That's good. Good job on me, you know, supporting the team that I cover. Uh, but what a fun game last night, Luca. The Raptors wind up winning. Let's start with your biggest takeaway. What was your biggest takeaway from last night's game? Yeah, so Raptors uh, covered actually that three-point spread. And, yeah, it was an exciting game all throughout. I mean, it had those vibes, man. It it was just an amazing game to witness. But, yeah, I'm going to start here uh, with uh, one of my major takeaways. And it's actually going to go to the rookie, Christian Coloco. So, you look at Coloco, he did see some time in this one. The Raptors going into this game, just for context, were missing uh, Ken Birch, Otto Porter Jr., and Chris Boucher. So the Rook was able to get some minutes. He played 15 minutes in this one. Uh, he was only one of five from the field, uh, three points, but did have six rebounds, had a block shot. But it was just his presence in the paint, Sean. The Raptors finally have a guy who is over seven feet, and they got a guy in Christian Coloco who is going to be somebody where the opposing team is going to be mindful of every time they attack the basket. Donovan Mitchell tried to give him a a poster dunk and a little introduction to the league, but Coloco wasn't having anything of it. He stood his ground. He he altered Mitchell's shot. And that's exactly what Coloco is going to be doing in his role. He's going to block a lot of shots. He's going to alter a lot of shots. And he's going to be that defensive anchor in the paint, that wall in the paint, that's going to make the opposition think twice about, hey, am I going to go inside? So it was a really solid debut for Coloco. The offense obviously is not something that is going to happen right away. I don't think Raptors fans are expecting him to be an offensive spurt, but they are expecting him to be what he was defensively. And I think he's going to continue to get better in that defensive role, especially under this Raptors system. So he's a very... Uh, talented big and I think the future is bright for him so it's really good to see Coloco in his first game with the Raptors in the regular season context look the part yeah and really quickly I do think plus minus is like the most overrated stat and arguably the worst stat in all professional sports but he was the only bench player last night to have a positive plus minus so that's good to see and you know looking at his scouting report coming out from um blanking i think it was arizona or arizona, was that, yeah. no, it was arizona because walker kessler was at auburn um yeah. but looking at sky report like he's a guy that really does he's just a shot blocking rim protector the raptors like you mentioned they're brilliantly luca the raptors have been missing that and i know you know if you asked me in, in the draft i would have said go get a guard go get a guard but uh I, this was also another sneaky need for the raptors i'm glad they hit on that i do agree walker kessler you can do you can get really more creative with some of your ball screen coverages as well defensively. So uh I, I love the fact that he played well and I like the pick at the time. Um I thought the offense looked better than it did last year, which is get is one game. The Cavs, you know, obviously Darius Garland is a defensive specialist, but it's still game one. But I, I liked what the offense looked like. I thought they generated some really good looks. And I mean, as you said in your live stream on your YouTube channel, Luca, that game, especially in the first half. It could have like gotten away from the from the Cavs if the Raptors could simply make some of those uh, open looks they were getting. They wound up shooting with thirteen for thirty from three on the night, so that's actually a pretty solid percentage, which but, is better uh, from the preseason, right? Remember that was one of our biggest concerns. Yeah. So I'll take yeah. that. 
Um, so yeah, man, I, I think that's my biggest takeaway. The offense looks good. The defense, if you look like analytically, shout out to Synergy Sports um and data or whatever, but like analytically, defensively, the Raptors didn't look too too high. I have to go back and rewatch for a second time, but um the defense will come around. That's something that I think progressively gets better as the year go on. Um, but yeah, so far I thought my biggest takeaway was how the offense looked and they were getting a lot cleaner looks than you could arguably say they did last year. Maybe it's just year two with all these guys together. Yeah. And that was something that was evident here. Like you could already tell in this first game, the Raptors are going to be better than they were a season ago. And there were two instances in this game where, yeah, it looked like the Cavs were going to go on a run and, and possibly run away with this thing in the first half. I know it was early, but they did go on 11 0 run. They did capture a lead. They outscored the Raptors in that second Q 35 to 23. Um, but then the Raptors, you know, were able to hang around and then going into the fourth quarter, which is going to lead me to my other takeaway. The Raptors were down by eight and they came back to win this quarter 32 to 21 and ultimately win this game 108 to 105. And you speak about that defense. It was that, championship as defense that was you know on full display in that fourth it was that very stagnant defense that we've seen the raptors have from time to time and it was great to see in the opening game where you have this close contest the raptors defense absolutely buckled down just limited the cavaliers to 21 points and donovan mitchell who was a standalone in this game i got to give him his flowers 31 points he goes to the bench the raptors win those minutes he comes back he doesn't look like the same Donovan Mitchell prior to that. So the Raptors made everybody earn their buckets down the stretch on this Cavaliers team. And I think that speaks volumes to how this Raptors team is just able to buckle down in critical moments of a ball game. And when the game's on the line, they play their best. So I was very happy to see this defense answer the call in that fourth quarter in particular and create a lot of uh, turnovers, which led to the fast break. The Raptors won that uh, department against the Cavaliers, which was huge. So uh, yeah, it's going to be that top-notch defense that's going to win this Raptors team a lot of games. And they're going to be in a lot of close games. So it's good to have that to fall back on. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Raptors won that department 20-7 to in uh, fast break points. They also won the rebounding battle. They had 12 offensive rebounds to 6 for the Cavaliers. Granted, you shoot more shots, you miss more shots, you get more opportunities to have offensive rebounds. But, I mean, 12-6 to six is definitely still... Very, very impressive. Uh, Luca, what was another one of your big takeaways from last night's game? Yeah, I want to touch on that too, offensive rebounds. I think that's like a huge component because there are a couple of plays that come to mind where the Raptors did have second chance opportunities and it allowed them to hit a three. So like th that's a huge uh, department to win. And especially going up against a bigger Cavs team who did dominate in points in the paint. I thought that was uh, solid for the Raptors just to create uh, second chance opportunities uh, by, you know, keeping uh, the offensive uh, rebounding possession. Um, another takeaway is when you look at this Raptors team, it's going to come down to their five. Like Siakam was clearly the best player uh, in, in this game for the Raptors. He had 23 points, 11 rebounds, and he was just, you know, he had a, a consistent game. I think he shot, what, 9 of 20 from the field. Yeah. Uh, so, like, he didn't have – a moment where he went away. He was the most consistent producer in that first half. And then that carried over into the second half. So he's clearly this team's best player as of now, but you look at what's going to make the Raptors special is they got five guys who can erupt at any moment. They got five guys who could be this team's most productive player on any given night. You talk about OG and Anobi started slow in this one, then had a magnificent second half, overall 18 points, five assists, seven rebounds. He had a big block in the third quarter. Uh, Scotty Barnes, a little bit frustrated early on, got into a bit of foul trouble. He came into his zone with the playmaking, being aggressive, driving to the basket. I liked how we had a couple of ISO possessions. I want to see Scotty Barnes be more of that like comfortable ball handler when he is asked to go one-on-one -on -one with the other defender. Um, you look at Siakam, like I said, 23-11. Fred Van Vliet, 15-5-2. It was a quieter night for him, but he's still able to get 15 points. And then Gary Trent Also, he had four steals. Yep. And he had four steals. So he was great defensively all night. And he had a tough task going to, you know, against Mitchell at times. And then Gary Trent Jr., 19 points and five rebounds. So my point is the Raptors have five guys who can shine 
in the moment at any given moment. So I, I think that was great to see. I think this is what's going to make them very, very tough to beat. I mean, whenever you have five starters score 15 or more points, you're going to be tough to beat. And yeah. this is a complete team. And I think it, it, their strength is in numbers. This is not a team that's going to have that quote unquote superstar type player, but they got five guys who could go out there and beat you, you know, themselves. So I was very happy to see that spreading the wealth and looking good out there. To your point, Luke, I think there's only two other teams in the East that you look at their starting five and on any given night, all five could probably give you 15. That's the Boston Celtics in Miami. Like yeah. there's a night where like Lowry, Tyler Hero, uh, they went like Max Strews, Jimmy and Bam, all can give you 15. And then Boston, right, with almost any combination of lineup they want to throw out there, they could all give you 15 tonight. And that's something that could play into the Raptors' favor favor come a playoff series like you're facing i don't know let's go with the team that i think the raptors are better than it quite pisses me off that people think that are better than the raptors if the raptors face face the hawks in the playoff series right if the raptors singled out trey young okay like if you're nate mcmillan the hawks coach who are you singling out you say pascal siakam because he's the best player cool fred bibley og Nobi, gary trey jr yeah. scotty barnes President Chua, all these Otto Porter Jr., these guys could still beat you four out of seven games in a playoff series where if you take away Trey Young or if you go to, like, Chicago, you take away DeMar DeRozan or, I don't know, I mean, what, what's another team in the East? You, Brooklyn, like, you try to take away Kevin Durant. Like, these teams where it's one or two superstar dominated and, you know, solid role players, you take one of those stars away, it's a lot tougher of a playoff series where you take – I don't know, Fred Van Bleed away. Okay, cool. We still have five other guys that can beat you any given night. So I thought that was a great point. Yeah, I chew a from, you know, with 10 from off the bench and going, talking about this bench, this bench wasn't even as good as it could be. And we talked about this more in detail in the previous podcast, how the bench, their depth has been upgraded going to this season. Once Chris Boucher comes back, once Otto Porter Jr. Come back, uh, comes back, which we both agreed he's going to just open things up, I think, from a three-point standpoint uh, on this team like they're gonna have weapons now from off the bench who could add to the wealth of that starting five and you know Achua um, is obviously there doing his thing Thad Young we know what he's capable of you got the rookie and Christian Coloco I know Hernan Gomez had a rough debut regular season debut with the Raptors in, in seven minutes but you gotta be patient with him and then Delano Banton um, so the Raptors got a lot of guys, even from off the bench, that can come in and make an impact in any game that they see minutes in. And just one last thing about Precious, he was he's my sleeper pick to win most improved player of the year. And I, I liked how he came into his own after. There were moments in this game he was still making some of the same mistakes that he did last season where he would rush with, you know, his dribble or he wouldn't catch a ball cleanly, which would have led to an easy layup. But then in the second half, I noticed, you know, he slowed down his tempo, took his time, and the game came to him. And Precious Achua is going to have to be a big contributor for this Raptors team if they do want to make a run. And I think he can be. I think this is a guy, when he comes off the bench, I love his energy. I love his hustle. And if he could just limit the mistakes that he makes, he's going to be a big contributor to this team moving forward. Yeah, you have your two residential uh leaders of the precious Chua fan club um no precious is awesome like you said i thought he made some more winning plays in the second half even some ones that don't pop up on a stat sheet um and yeah i, I think the raptors going forward again no auto porter jr on opening night no chris boucher on opening night two guys one of them they re-signed this offseason the other one they used their uh part of their non-taxpayer ml leon um are definitely gonna be big contributors and I think we're I think people are kind of sleeping on the Otto Porter Jr. acquisition. Yeah. And when you throw him back into the mix, we might see some like ridiculous lineups from this from this team. And it's gonna be fun to watch and scary for some of these other NBA teams, Luca. Well, you got a guy who could come in and start hitting the three ball, which is something that the Raptors team, you know, has struggled with for the most part. When you look at it during the preseason, it was good to see them at least you better than the Cavs in that department. And I like to like to open up the fourth quarter. And I ultimately thought this won them the game. They win the minutes that Donovan Mitchell is on the bench, but also they come out hitting like three straight threes. So just adding another three point shot maker and Otto Porter Jr., which is basically why they brought him in. I think that's going to be huge for this offense and this team. And it's going to give the starters 
some, you know, opportunities to, to have, you know, some rest. And I think that's like probably one of the negatives, if you want to call it a negative from their win in game one is the fact that you look at the minutes that the starters log pretty heavy minutes, but they're fresh. It's opening game. Uh, they're going to obviously go all out. But when you have guys like Otto Porter Jr., Chris Boucher come back into the rotation, that's uh, that's going to take care of itself. So, yeah, no, overall, it was uh, a very promising performance for this Raptors team. And uh, a lot of people are talking about the Raptors after one game. You know, they go out there, they prove to people for one game, at least they are better than this Cavs team. Now, granted, the Cavs had uh, Darius Garland leave in the first half. I hope he's OK. But. This, these two teams, I know a lot of people think they're going to be neck and neck, but I think that the Raptors are ultimately going to be better than this Cavs team. And, you know, time will obviously prove that. But, uh, yeah, I really liked how they were able to come up with the statement win against an opponent that a lot of people pick to be better than the Raptors this season. Yeah, and really, really quickly, you talk about that run the Raptors went on start the fourth quarter. In the first four minutes or so, before the first time out, the Raptors were on a 14-6 run to start the fourth quarter, which included two OG and OB threes, a pressure to chew a three, and a Gary Trent Jr. three. Um, and you add in another uh, pressure to chew a layup that OG and OB assisted on. So OG, you talked about his brilliance in the second half. He was big time in the fourth quarter um, as well, especially in this opening stretch that tied the game um, early on. And it was, you know, just excellent basketball from there on out. Let's take a look at tonight's matchup against the Brooklyn Nets, Luca. The Brooklyn Nets reeling off a blowout loss to the New Orleans Pelicans. I picked the Pelicans win that game. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Um, Luca, first off, just going more broad NBA here. Is it time to panic about Brooklyn in your eyes? <laughs> so I saw a tweet. I think it got some traction. Some guy then deleted it where uh, he, he called this game a must win for the Nets. Second game into the season. Uh, he was a Nets fan. And you know what? The Nets go on to lose this game and the Raptors do it in dominating fashion. I think the sky is going to start to fall for Nets fans once again going into this season. I mean, my Nets finals agenda looks brutal through one game. And if the Raptors are able to beat the Nets tonight, that agenda might officially go in the trash. Now, I know we don't want to overreact completely to what we've seen, but... Look, it's either one or two things, right? The Nets are going to be dysfunctional and they might be bad this season or the Pelicans are going to be really good. And I'm going to lean towards the Pelicans being really good because that's my sleeper pick in the Western Conference. But I'm very interested to see what kind of Nets team we're going to get in this one. And, and they could be shorthanded too. I, I believe uh, Joe Harris is uh, probable for this one. So if he's unable to suit up, that's going to be a weapon for the Nets that is not going to be able to be used in this game. And I think for the Raptors, they're going to be coming into this one with a lot of confidence. You know the type of game you just won, emotional battle, getting that victory, closing it out, winning that tight game. And now you're going to be taking on a Nets team that they're going to have all the pressure on them because everybody expects them to bounce back. Everybody expects them to get a victory here. So... Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. I think more so for the Brooklyn Nets and the Raptors because I know it's game number two, Sean, but there's a lot riding on this game, I think, for the Nets. Yeah, I feel like and this is going to get picked up. This is the type of thing that gets picked up by somebody and the Nets watch it and like they just win 15 straight. But this this Nets team is the type of team that – if you just like punch them in them, like they're 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 a really good team. They got a lot of great players, so they're gonna hit you a lot. They're gonna hit you a lot. But you punch the nets in the mouth one good time, and everything starts to crumble. And I'm not sure the nets. And this is gonna sound awful, but I'm not sure the nets are like mentally tough enough as a team to take a punch and get back up and like not have the season collapse. Just from last season, the pressure and the, the utter disappointment of last season, the question marks that this and granted, I like the roster a lot. I, I really want to say that like, heading into the season, I'm like, I like the roster a lot. Maybe need a backup center, but love the roster, right? Especially when they get healthy. I think Steve Nash is mid. I think he's not the worst coach in the NBA, but I, I think he gets crapped on too much, but he's not good, obviously. 
But I thought they'd be all right. But um, yeah, like if they get pounded again by the Raptors tonight, it's not going to be pretty in, in uh, Brooklyn. Um, two games in after a Kevin Durant trade request from the summer. So, um, and both games at home. We talk about the Raptors having a tough start to their season in terms of the competition. How about the Nets here? So you just got your ass kicked by the Pelicans on your home court. You're taking on the Raptors on your home court. Then you got the Grizzlies, Bucks, and Mavericks. So that's a very tough start for this Nets team. So you lose again tonight against the Raptors in front of your home crowd. You go down 0-2, and then you got those three remaining teams a part of this five-game stretch. It's going to be a little nerve-wracking amongst Nets fans. And I think another guy who's going to be under some pressure too is Ben Simmons. So in 23 minutes, two of three, six personal fouls, minus 26. And again, I know plus minus is the most overrated stat. I never talk about it, but it was a pretty disappointing regular season debut for Ben Simmons. And just looking at this Nets team, outside of KD, Kyrie, they like where else are you going to get that production, that consistent production? You know Ben Simmons is not going to be relied upon score. Who else is going to step up in that offensive role? You know, guys like Claxton did have 13. You hope a guy like Joe Harris, once he's fully healthy, can contribute to that. But even looking at their bench, outside of Patty Mills, the 16, and I'm talking both their game against the, the Pelicans, Right. no other key contributor. I mean, you know, ex-Raptor Watanabe, can't really bank on him. Edwards, Morris, they don't really I like, I like Cam Thomas. Back. I do like Cam Thomas. Yeah, how did he do yesterday or uh, a couple days ago? Yeah, yeah, he only had two points. He struggled, so one of four. So the, the, the Nets are going to need a good supporting cast, and I don't know if this team can have that good supporting cast, but we'll, we'll I, see about that. I will say this about Brooklyn. I feel like, and this is maybe why like I didn't watch too, too much of that game. I got a little bit of it. Um, I feel like this is the problem with Brooklyn's like players on the roster where, where you're talking like, hey, who's gonna who's gonna get the production um outside of Katie and Kyrie? I think part of it is because like everybody's so dependent on Katie and Kyrie. Like it hear me out, it maybe it's because I watched the team all 82 games last year, much to my own misery. It's like the Lakers last year. Everybody's offense dependent on AD and LeBron. It wasn't an offensive system, like it was. Exactly. Your, your, your spot up looks from the corner are going to be because AD and LeBron or maybe even Russ dri- driven into the lane and kicked it out to you. Right. There isn't an actual like free flowing offense where the offense creates stuff for you. And then I'll also a hey, KDA Kyrie in it just as, you know, additions. Right. Um, so I, I think that's spot on Luca and um, call me bias. I think the Raptors win. I think the matches match up really, really well with them. Um KD is obviously a hassle and and concerning is is all hell. But um, look, you, you you just have to when when you're playing the Nets. At least is how this how, how I would game plan. Luca, tell me if you disagree. I ha- I accept the fact that KD is just going to be KD at some point, right? Kyrie, you can you can do your little extra stuff. Like you got to shut down Kyrie as best as, as best as you can. And don't let any random role player just pop off. Like that's the thing. Like if Joe Harris plays, don't let Joe Harris like go four for eight from three, right? Don't let Patty Mills go four for nine from three. Don't let these other guys be factors. If KD scores sixty, KD scores sixty. You live with it, right? And then you just trust that you can score enough baskets on the other end. Um, I wasn't as high on them to say like they were title contenders. I think they're at best like the fourth best team in the East. I like Milwaukee. I like Boston. I actually like Miami a little bit more than than uh, Brooklyn. And then, I mean, honestly, this point, maybe even Toronto as well. So yeah. um, that that's just my thoughts on the game. I think the Raptors will win. Um, only concern is will they be able to, like, replicate at least a decent offensive showing they showed in the first game. Well, that's a, actually a really good point. Let's just say KD goes off for three plus points. Donovan Mitchell just scored 31 and the Raptors still won the game. So right. you can live with that. It's going to come down to, like you said, can the Raptors limit those other role players? And some of these guys who are going to come off the bench 
are they going to have a big game? Because if those guys are limited, the Raptors should be able to win this game as well. And it's funny. If you ask me who would have won this game before the season started, I would have picked the Nets. But yeah. I got to go with the Raptors, just given what we've seen over the last 48 hours from both teams. So I do think the Raptors will win this game. It is in Brooklyn. So uh, it's going to be a, a, you know an early test for the Raptors to go on the road and, and take on still a very capable Brooklyn Nets team. I'm still going to dub the Nets – a title contender. I mean, I'm not officially going to go off that train after one game, but they look if they look miserable in this game and the Raptors are able to beat them handedly, which I'm hoping for, yeah, it might be time to uh, change up that agenda this early into the season. But uh, it's going to be very interesting for the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, that crowd, we know they can turn on you very, very quickly. So uh, I do expect the Raptors win, though. I think their uh, their offense is going to play well. I think they're going to continue to hit that three ball. And I think defensively, they're going to do what we just said. So, uh, yeah, I think the Raptors will make it 2-0. and all. Yeah, really, really quickly, there if there's two teams in the NBA, actually I'll go three, that I don't trust worth anything. I don't trust Brooklyn. I don't trust Philly. And I don't trust Phoenix. There's just a bad vibe for me for all on. three. That's like, pretty spot on. I'm trying to think there's another team. Like you could go Clippers for like the the history, but like come on, man, that team that team like it's too well coached. They have too many good players. Exactly. They're not like Brooklyn and Philly where they're just dysfunctional as all hell. Um, Luca, before we get you, before we get out of here, man, what who is or what is the biggest X factor for tonight's game against the Nets? It could be a concept, like what the Raptors have to do, or it could be a player that's gonna be key. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Gary Trent Jr. Gary Trent Jr. and even OJ Anobi. When those guys get going and their offense is rolling, the Raptors are very tough to beat because now all of a sudden you're not only worried about Fred Van Vliet who could erupt at any time, Siakam who is this team's best player and he's always gonna give you consistent stat lines. Those guys produce now all of a sudden you know you got so many other problems on your hands. So that's again what makes this team so special. If they can get one or two other guys that can contribute in a big way, they are so tough to beat because they just have so many different weapons on this team that can beat you. And even if they have another lackluster outing from their bench and Achua just chips in again with like eight to 10 points, they should be able to take care of business if they can get get at least two other guys with a Siakam or Van Vliet going off. So I think uh, spreading the wealth is going to be another theme in this game. I, I think we're going to see this five. Um, get theirs again i'm gonna go with og and scotty because i think they're gonna be the two guys most likely tasked with guarding kevin Durant the most um so they're in but they're still gonna have to produce offensively and i was thinking about this point earlier while you were talking luca we're talking about the offense this could be an offensive like get right game and like try to keep stacking on positive performances for your offense and uh gain positive momentum because you're not basically a good brooklyn nets team at least a good, sorry, a good Brooklyn Nets defense. A good Brooklyn Nets defense. Right now, at least, we're, we still think they're they're just fine. Um, but you're not basically a good Brooklyn Nets defense. Um, they got some players, especially uh, in their starting five. Like, let's say Joe Harris starts tomorrow night, right? What's your starting five? You're probably, what What was it opening night? It was ben, it was Kyrie, Royce O'Neal, Nick Clax, and KD, Ben Simmons. Like, Kyrie mismatch, mismatch him to death. Even, and you definitely go to their bench. They don't have any, like, decent defenders off their bench. So they have a couple of decent uh, defenders in that starting five, but for the most part, they don't play good team defense. Um, so this could be a really good get right offensive game, but uh, OG and Scotty, cause they're going to be guarding Kevin Durant a lot and they still going to be axed to score rather 15 points at least or so. So, uh, those are probably my, my X factors. I just realized too, Scotty Barnes is a really good pick. He most likely will have a big game tonight. I mean, he is going to have the motivation to show up here because what was the whole talking point the entire offseason? Should the Raptors trade Scotty Barnes for Kevin Durant? He's going to go out there and, and, and prove. Crazy, by the way. Crazy, by the way, right? He's going to go out there and prove how crazy that was. And he's going to show up in a big way, I think. Because, you know, Scotty Barnes, he's a very animated player. He loves to go out there and just win. So, yeah, I, I think that's uh, going to show up on the court. I think we're going to see a big game for Scotty and, and prove to people that, uh, you know, the Raptors made the right choice when they never traded him. For KD. <laughs> How heated. I know, like, personally, I would have been like, I ran. I thought that would have been a stupid tra trade, but um, how heated would you have been at Masai Ujiri somehow pulled that trade off? 
I would have been heated. And could you imagine like the vibes going into the second game already having Scotty Barnes go up against his old team? And you, you would have definitely had to have KD score like 50 points for you to be somewhat happy that you did trade away Scotty for KD. So I'm glad it never happened. I don't even want to think about it, but uh, yeah, it definitely would not have been good vibes as good vibes as the vibe going on right now in Toronto. Absolutely. Well, Raptor Station, comment down below. What was your reaction to game one against the Cleveland Cavaliers? And also, how confident are you all that the Raptors could get a big time win and start 2-0 and before they have a couple of brutal games down in South Beach? Luca, my man, thank you so much for hopping on with me as always. My pleasure, man. We'll, uh, we'll see how this team fares against the Nets. All right, guys. So next time, see ya and stay safe.